Now then, how are we all doing? Right, today we're going to be looking at the uh, cooling system uh, on the 3350. Uh, I just want to go over a few checks on this. And also, we'll be looking at uh, coolants, or antifreeze, in general. Uh, so what I want to do though with this, as I said, is I want to um, just get it running and check that there are no leaks uh, through any of the joints, hoses, whatever, in case, you know, because I think a lot of these are original. So we just want to check that they haven't perished uh, or cracked over time. Same with the clips and, and uh, actual hose clips. Just check that they're all right, they're not leaking or anything. And then what we'll do is we'll take uh, a sample of the coolant and uh, we'll check that it's you know fit for purpose basically that it, it's not going to freeze. Right, so we'll let it get up the temperature and uh, as I said we'll have a check on all the joints and hose. Stinky bloody thing. Right, well, everything appears to be okay. Um, hoses all look good, clips all look good. So, uh, what we'll have to do now is just let it cool a bit. I'm going to take a sample out of the header tank here for the coolant, and then we can uh, have a look at that and see if it's up to, well, basically up to scratch. Right then. We're going to have a look at these uh, various concoctions of uh, antifreeze or coolant and um, see how they basically come up on the um, tester. Now, of course, as with all this, you know, this is just monkey maintenance. It's at a very basic level, um, just to, you know, demonstrate a bit about the coolants. So, you know, common sense dictates there's always, you know, a host of variations. Always look at your manufacturer's recommendations for coolant. And also, it's down to where you are. We'll have a look at these. So what we've got first, this is, um, drop a job up here. Um, that's not actually Mountain Dew. Wide, I know you're thinking it's not. This is at the John Deere. At the 3350. So if we drop this in, take some up. Right, what we got? What we got? One sinking. We've got five discs floating. One sort of sinking, settling. If five discs, you can see that on there. Can you see that very, very well? So we've got five discs floating, one has sunk. And that says on here, five discs is minus 34 degrees Fahrenheit. That's minus 37 degrees Celsius. So uh, over here, minus 37, that's more than enough protection. That's great uh, in the UK, in England. That's, you know, um, I mean, we'd typically a decent average winter um, whatever one of those is, we might see minus five to ten, you know, in a harsh one. The lads up in Scotland, up further north, they'll see maybe some high teens. But as I said, that's good enough for here. So that's okay. And that was using, as I remember, as I said, Cool Guard. We used concentrate mixed with um, demineral, demineralized water. But you see, the, the biggest uh, misconception of uh, antifreeze 
is that all it does is stops the uh, you know the water in the cooling system from freezing. Um, it does so much more than that because uh, there are some other additives in there. Now, ideally, just like with Cool Guard, they will use uh, demineralized water. And the reason for that is if you use standard tap water in a cooling system, let's say you put no antifreeze in at all, you just used pure water out of a tap, uh, good enough to drink, good enough to wash in. Um, over time, it was, you know, obviously forget cold temperatures now if you drained out every night, but you were running it during the day, you know, normal conditions. Over time, you're going to get a buildup of um, like an oxidization inside the block. If you cut the block in half, you'd see um, that there's buildup of oxidization. There will also be um, deposits of like calcium in that buildup because where you get a hot spot nearly you know, on a, near a cylinder wall, um, calcium deposits, silicates, and, and you know, and again, oxidization will tend to um, sort of get drawn to that. And then obviously they'll stop there and cling to it, that hot part, and they'll coat it obviously because they're, they're around that. Then the coolant is then, isn't touching the sun of the wall anymore. It's now touching the deposit. So it's not cooling the cylinder as much. So it gets hotter. So that in turn draws more deposits there, which cling to that. So it cools even less. And what it builds up, and what you can happen, you can get a restriction of flow because it's narrowing it down as it's building up in the um, coolant, uh, coolant waterways. And um, also, then you know, you can then start developing problems with your engine itself the pistons or the head or whatever isn't getting cooled enough, so you can end up with um, uh, pistons, you know, with the rings picking up, you can end up with cylinder heads cracking due to all due to lack of cooling. So there's that side of it. Also in there, there are um, lubricants because um, you know with the casting and inside and deposits. What you don't want is, as I said, for the water to basically you know friction as it's passing to slow down. You want to keep it moving, keep the keep the warm stuff passing and, and taking the heat away, and the and the new fresh sort of cooler stuff coming past again. Just keep the circulation going. So there are lubricants just to line all that, uh, that cooling system and keep things flowing. Um, so as I said, they're in there. And then there are also there are um, additives to stop, uh, you know, or reduce cavitation. So where you maybe your water gallery is turning somewhere or going away, in those corners normally, um, you'll get, or you can get cavitation, which little air bubbles as the water spins around. You know, you get a um, an area and that can act just like those air bubbles believe it or not I know they're only air but they can act like the um, stones on the bottom of a riverbed and in time they'll, they can actually wear away at the casting and uh, you can end up with you know porous blocks and um, that's uh, that's in there as well to stop you know cavitation so it's not just an, an antifreeze I know we use that as a generic term we put antifreeze in but it really you know it does contain so much more and there's a lot more goes on in that cooling system than, than most people would uh, give credit for. Right, so we know stuff at the 3350 is good enough for here. This is what we would normally class as a standard mix. So I've got some you know, brand new coolant, some antifreeze, um, and it's of a main manufacturer's um, specification. And I've done it at 33%. So a third water, and um, sorry, a third coolant, two thirds water, and uh, that's what you know, most vehicles would run, and what we always are taught to run, you know. So we'll have a look at that, see what that comes out at. It's giving three discs. Well, three discs on here says minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which is minus 23 degrees Celsius, and that would be about right. That's what I'd expect to see. So. As I said, it, yeah, it's giving coverage, and it would it would cover what we need in this country, in the, in England. But again, in Canada, uh, at the moment, minus 23 degrees Celsius, so minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit. You're pushing your luck. You get John Deere's Cool Guard 2, 
And uh, let me show you that. Now that, as I said, cut can be bought as a concentrate or pre-mix. This is the pre-mix, and they pre-mix it at 50-50. Demineral Demineralized water and their uh, coolant. So let's just see what they... So pre-mix cool guard is giving five discs. So that's minus 34 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 37 degrees Celsius. So again, We'd be alright with that, so that's good. This is pure coolant, antifreeze. No water, no water added to this at all. So, in theory, what should give us minus 50 or something, at least, at least give us six discs, shouldn't it? So, still only give them five discs. It's not giving the six. So, there comes a point where you can actually add too much um, antifreeze coolant, rather. So as you say, you'd think you'd get all six discs because there's a strong pure mix and you don't. So there's a little lesson for you. Um, let's just have a quick squirt in here. So we can get, this is pure water, just out of interest. All six discs have sunk. So that obviously it's got no. <laughs> Um, protection against freezing. But um, it is important, as I said, it's, it's not just a case of, uh, you know, there's something there that'll do, you know, for the sake of what this costs, and this is like, you know, uh, 10 pounds uh, UK money. In the States, it'd probably be like 10 bucks. Um, so it's worth having one just in your tool kit. It's worth just going around your vehicles and just checking that, you know, you're covered because for the sake of a, you know, of a tenner, um, and maybe 20 or 30 pounds or bucks of, of uh, coolant additive just to top up, you might you know, save several thousand pounds worth of repairs if you've got a cracked head or a cracked block um, you know, in cold weather. Anyway, as ever, thank you all for watching. Look after yourselves and mind how you go.